welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 8744. So today, guys, we'll be doing my Asian Cup quarterfinal predictions. So as you can see right here, guys, I do have a new mic. I'm trying this out. Uh, hopefully, the uh, quality is better. So uh, let me know how the quality goes in the comments below. I'm just trying those for the first time ever. As well, like I said, let me know your predictions in the comments below. And uh, just to recap the round of 16, guys, I got six out of eight correct predictions. I only messed up with Iraq, and I messed up with uh, Tajikistan. So I predicted UAE and Iraq to play against each other, and we ended up getting um, uh, Tajikistan versus uh, Jordan. I also predicted um, Thailand to do it, and Uzbekistan did it. So basically, five out of eight, actually, not six out of eight. Anyways, enough introductions. Let's go ahead and get on with the video. So the first match we got here it is Tajikistan Jordan. This is the first match of the Asian Cup quarterfinals, and Tajikistan for me have done a fantastic job. You know, they beat the UAE on penalties, and for me, they were the better team for most of the game. I would say. It only really came alive in the second half, uh, I would say. And Tajikistan, for me, is a really solid team. Uh, they play really good football, play very possession-based football, and their coach almost looks like Albert Einstein. Uh, and um, as for Jordan, Jordan have done amazing. You know, beating Iraq in that fashion, 3-2, dramatic come from behind victory. And that for me, they deserve the win. Yeah, Iraqis can complain about the referees and all. For me... Um, it doesn't excuse the fact of how bad they were defensively because Iraq were simply abysmal defensively speaking on the day. So for this game, guys, what do I think is going to happen? It's a tricky game to call. This game could even potentially go to extra time. My issue with Tajikistan, though, is that many of the players are not very clinical for a goal. Um, and their top goal scorer only has, like, I think, seven goals. So that's actually pretty bad, you know. And I just feel like for me, this team, uh, they have some good players. Yami Tov is obviously a decent goalkeeper, but... And for me, the issue with Tajikistan, they just waste too many chances. They waste too many chances. Their midfield defense is pretty solid, pretty on spot on, but it's just their attack is what worries me. Whereas Jordan, on their hand, are coming into this game with great momentum, you know, having scored a lot of goals in the last couple of games. You know, Al Tarami, Al Nemit have been fantastic. And I just feel like for Jordan, they've just been amazing to watch. Really, really good brand of football, really good attacking football. It's also interesting that both of these nations have never made the semifinal before, so we're guaranteed to get a new nation in the semifinals for the first time ever in their history. And so how do I think this is going to pan out? I actually have Jordan. I think Jordan's going to triumph here. I'm going to say Jordan wins. I'm going to say three goals to one against Tajikistan. I just feel like for me, Tajikistan, for me, they're going to have their good spell, but I think Jordan is going to have superior quality finishing, and I think Jordan will see up Tajikistan. So I'm going to say Jordan wins three goals to one and move on to semifinals. But like I said, though, can't underestimate this Tajikistan team whatsoever. Next up, it is Australia versus South Korea. This is a big one. Big, big matchup. Um, I think for Australia, Graham Arnold's done a great job with this team. And even though the team hasn't really been playing the best football, per se, they haven't really looked the most convincing, they've been getting results. And that's the thing with this tournament is that it's about getting results. It's not about looking the best or playing the best football. It's about getting it done. And they are getting it done. Players like uh, Matthew Ryan, Irvine, have come a good uh, Sutar as well. And yeah, as for South Korea, they haven't really been that great in this tournament, even though they're in the quarterfinals. Jurgen Klinsmann still hasn't really got the best out of the team. The team is still a very, very, um, there's, this team is still all over the place when it comes to tactics. Uh, he even tried the three at the back against South Korea. And even though he did rectify things and change things throughout, he did change things and ultimately made fi uh, fixing I don't think in this kind of game you can mess up. So you have to start with the best 11 because we saw Saudi Arabia went pretty defensive after they took the lead after about 80 minutes. I don't think Australia will be that defensive. I think Australia will come over this game with a great game plan and Australia are very tough to break down. In fact, when you look at the last four games, they'll only concede one goal, where South Korea in the last four games have conceded seven goals. It makes me very worried, man. I'm very, really worried for Jurgen Klinsmann. Now, I will say this though, as bad, underwhelming as South Korea are, they are capable of getting results. That's just what they are. They have the better players compared to Australia. I mean, you have the likes of Kim and Jay, Son Hyun Min, you know. And obviously, South Korea looking to get revenge for uh, 2015 Asian Cup final. So, what do I think for this game, guys? I think this game could create a pence. And I think it's going to be very tight. I don't expect a lot of goals. I think it's going to be very cagey. I think this I think this will finish 1-1 after, after full time, after extra time. And I have the sneaky feeling that if it does go to penalties, I have a feeling Australia will triumph. I'm really hoping I'm wrong, though, because I want South Korea to win. Uh, for my Jurgen Klinsmann and Sauna uh, narrative, I think that'll be fantastic, you know, and I would love to see it. But um, objectively speaking, I am still yet to be seen. You know, it's still it's so hard for me to back the South Korea team with how all over the place they are when it comes to um, comes down tactics. Hopefully I'm wrong, though. 
Next up, it is Iran versus Japan. Iran are coming to this game uh, and uh, very, very kind of a bit underwhelming. You know, Iran haven't really been that great in this tournament, if you think about it. Yeah, they beat Palestine, which was to be expected, beat pretty convincingly. Then they about just about scraped a win against Hong Kong. They did play a really good game against UAE, were fantastic in that game, and then had a very underwhelming win against, um, uh, what is it called, Syria. As for Japan, they're coming to this game and full momentum. He, he, even though they lost against Iraq, I think this t- I think Moriasu has figured things out in terms of tactics, and I think he's got the best of the team, and I think he's made some big decisions because with that loss, I think he's realized that I have to start a Urad at striker. Urad cannot be on the bench. He has to start a striker, and that's one thing that you have to give credit to Moriasu. He's learned from his mistakes. Okay, so for this game, what I think for Iran is what I really worry for them is no Taremi. Taremi is not going to be present at all for this game, and I think that's what worries me for this game is that if you're ra- Iranian, it's going to be difficult because you have to rely on Osman. You have to rely on Osman to come clutch. And I'm sorry to say this, guys. That Chesme guy is horrendous. That guy is garbage. That Chesme guy cannot start for Iran. If he starts for Iran, Iran is screwed. Apparently, according to my Iranian uh, friend uh, friend the comp- uh, the live chat, we did our stream yesterday, he was telling me that the other players, so the center backs are injured, and Chesme had to play at center back. And he's actually a DM. He's not even a center back. So he, somewhat, playing someone out of position against a Japan team that have been scoring a lot of goals, that's not a good recipe. You know, Japan have been amazing. Takusa Kubo has been amazing. Mitoma is finally now back. He's now available. I know you also have the likes of Uado has been fantastic. The only thing I worry for Japan is defensively. Defensively, they look very, very sketchy. Defensively, they look very suspect. Um, and set pieces particularly. And I still don't rate Suzaki. So for that aspect, I think Iran could get a goal. I think they very well can. But I don't think they can score more than one. In fact, I think Japan's going to win this. I'm going to say Japan wins this 2-1. After regulation, I really would like to see Iran win this for an upset sake. You know, I was actually tempted to pick an upset, but I can't pick an upset without Taremi. I really can't pick Iran without Taremi. Now, maybe if Taremi was available, maybe there is a chance because I do think Taremi is that big difference maker. But I, it's hard to back Iran without Taremi. You know, it's really, really hard. You know, players like Osma is going to have to come up clutch. Goda is going to have to come up clutch. Venerov is going to have to come up clutch as well. He made some good penalty. He was good yesterday against Syria. So um, we'll have to see what he does, man. Uh, the, fun, the last matchup we got here is Qatar versus Uzbekistan, man. Qatar, man, they've been fantastic in this tournament. I think they're actually coming to, and of all the quarterfinals, I believe they're the only team that has actually won all their games. And they're the only team that actually look very amazing, you know, fantastic. Qatar have been fantastic, you know. Almas, Ali, Akram, Afif have been fantastic. Al Haidos as well. As for Uzbekistan, they've been also been pretty good as well. You know, they've had a pretty good group, you know, group stage campaign. They finished second in the group behind Australia. And um, they're in the quarterfinals, man. They defeated Thailand. So I just think for um, Qatar, man, in particular, man, my area of concern I have with Qatar is that they haven't been truly challenged. And I think Uzbekistan will be the first real challenge. We saw Palestine kind of give them a challenge, you can say, in the first half. But you can tell that Palestine kind of fatigued out and kind of gassed out. Uzbekistan is a team that I don't think will gas out. This is a team that applies in high energy. They're very well organized. They're very pressing as a team, and they're just really fun to watch. And I think that Fazlov kid is just a fantastic young player from Uzbekistan. I think it could cause dangerous as Qatar defense. And Qatar, for me, I just feel like for me, this team is kind of Amla's Ali Akram Afif team. Without these two players coming up clutch, I don't think Qatar is really that great. You know, I haven't seen the other players really step up, you know. So this is where I think there's an upset. I feel like of all the quarterfinals, fixtures this is the one that there's the most upset potential and for that reason i actually have uzbekistan to triumph here i am going to go with uzbekistan to win i'm going to say three two i think this will be a high scoring thrilling game i think this will finish two two after regulation and i have a feeling uzbekistan will score a winner in extra time to seal it to make it three two so like i said man those are my predictions and here's to recap so, so guys so according to my predictions this will be the semifinals i would have I would have Australia versus Jordan, Japan versus Uzbekistan as my semifinals. Let me know your semi. Let me know your predictions. Comments below. Please remember to like and subscribe. Of course, comment below your thoughts. Comments below. And yeah, like I said, guys, please remember to also click that member join button to get access to members' videos, member streams. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.